In this video, we're going to do uh, discuss a little bit about what we mean by a balloon payment or a drop payment. These type of payments pop up in amortized loans when you get a final payment that's different from the level, the level payment that you make for every other period. Uh, in particular, if you have a home equity loan, for example, a lot of times the level payment that you make has a it ends up with a balloon payment at the end of the loan period that you have to pay back or refinance. So these balloon payments pop up a lot in actual practice. I'm going to step aside, let you pause, write down the example, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so again, balloon payment, drop payment are payments that are talking about the very final payment of an amortized loan. So the amortized loan will have the exact same payment that you make all the way up until the very, very final payment. And then you pay a different amount. So again, it could be that you've financed it so that your payments are smaller than you would actually need to pay to pay off the balance at the end. So you have a final larger payment to make at the end. Or it could be that when your payments were calculated to start with, your payment got rounded up at the, by pennies, and so your last payment will be a little bit smaller at the end because you've actually been paying slightly higher than what you needed to pay over the course of your loan, so you get a payment that's slightly smaller at the very, very end. In either case, we handle them exactly the same way. So the only difference between balloon and drop payment is just the language. You get a balloon payment for your final payment if the last payment is larger than your level payment that you've been making all along. You get a drop payment if your last payment is smaller than the level payment you've been making all along. So the only difference between the two is literally if one is bigger in the level payment or if it's smaller than the level payment. So, but you handle them in the exact same way. So let's just illustrate how we handle this by example. So we've seen Hildegard in a previous video. Hildegard bought a used boat for $20,000. She's going to pay the loan back using 23 monthly payments in this case of $600 each, payable at the end of each month, and then is going to have a final payment at the end of the 24th month. If we've got a 9% nominal rate compounded monthly, what's the amount of the final payment? So here's our time value diagram. We've got $600 payments up until time 23, and then we get a final payment that needs to be paid off, so the loan balance will be zero when we get to time 24. We also need to know our period interest rate. We're given that nominal annual rate of 9%. Convert it by dividing it by 12 to a 0.75% interest rate. So to figure out the amount of that last payment, and remember again, that last payment has to pay the loan off. So to figure out what that last payment has to be, we need to figure out the balance at the time right before the last payment, add the interest on, and then that will be the amount that we have to pay off. All right, so to figure out the balance at time 23, Remember, we've got two methods for figuring out balance at, time 20, at a given time. But remember, the prospective method is looking forward. I can't figure it out by looking forward in this case because I don't know what the final payment's supposed to be, and that's the only thing that happens past time 23. So to figure out the balance at time 23 here, we're going to have to use the, pros or the, excuse me, the retrospective method. We don't have any other choice. So we accumulate the initial loan balance for 23 periods. So we get 1.0075 to the 23rd times that 20,000. And then we subtract off the accumulated payments that we've made so far. So that's where the 600 S angle 23 of 0.75% is coming from. Using our calculator, we can figure out that the balance at time 23 is 8749.57. Now again, it's important to know that this is the balance at time 23. We're not going to pay this off until time 24. So we still have to move this balance one spot forward to figure out what the final balloon payment has to be. So we take that 879, excuse me, 8749.57, multiply it by the 1.0075 to move it forward from time 23 to time 24 to get a final balloon payment of 88.15.19. And again, it's a balloon payment in this case because that 88.15 is certainly significantly larger than the level payment we've been paying along. Had this turned out to be a smaller value than the 600, we would have called it a drop payment. Literally the only